Thanks for clicking. Canadian stat levels have hit record highs and show no signs of slowing, according to new reports by Stats Canada and TransUnion. With 35% of Canadians recently saying that rising rates could push them closer to bankruptcy and interest rates set to continue to rise, the rise in Canadian household debt is a real concern. So what I want to do today is go over the Stats Canada report as it appears to paint a very dismal picture for Canadians' finances going into the future. Although we do have some good news, which we'll get to later. Then I want to go over the TransUnion report as it not only goes over the types of debt levels that Canadians have racked up as they return to pre-pandemic activity, but it also shows a rise in delinquency rates. We're expecting the release of Canada's inflation data on Wednesday, with the U.S. having recently released its inflation data coming in at 7.9%, and with Canada traditionally following close behind, we're expecting that our inflation went up from last month's 5.1%, which was already at a three-decade high. We'll obviously have an update out on that. Click like and subscribe to get that update. But for now, let's get into Stats Canada's report. So according to the new report by Stats Canada, Canadians' debt-to-income level reached its highest point ever at 186.2%. While an increase in debt isn't a problem in and of itself, usually you would hope that it was accompanied by an increase in income. However, according to the report by Stats Canada, this increase in debt was accompanied by a decrease in overall household disposable income on the part of Canadians. So essentially, according to the report, we're increasing our debt loads and decreasing our ability to service those debts. It does not add up. We did receive some good news, though, as Canada's overall debt-to-GDP ratio actually shrank in the fourth quarter, down 0.6%. This was driven in large part by an increase in income on the part of the government. So, while Canadians as a whole saw their income decrease and their expenditures increase on servicing their debt, the Canadian government's was almost the exact opposite, as they are spending less to service their debt while receiving an increase from tax revenue. So if you remember at the beginning of the pandemic when Trudeau said that the government was borrowing so that Canadians didn't have to. We took on debt so Canadians wouldn't have to. It looks like that's over. It's all over. I'm going to tell you, it's all over. So while Stats Canada is giving us an overall picture of the amount of debt held by Canadians, TransUnion's new report shows us where that debt is being held. This report shows that, with the exception of lines of credit, new debt is up all across the board. If we look at this chart, installment loan, those are up almost 20%. This was followed by mortgage debt, which is, which is up by almost 10%. And if we look at auto loans and credit cards, they are also up just over 2%. So credit is expanding, income is decreasing, and according to the TransUnion report, delinquencies, those that are late by 60 or 90 days, is also up across Canada. According to the report, this was the second month in a row that late payments, delinquencies, were up in Canada, although the report notes that this isn't so much a cause for, for concern as it's largely a result of Canadians returning to pre-pandemic activity. Throughout the pandemic, Canadians didn't really take on much debt as, uh, as the uncertainty, I think, of the, of the pandemic dissuaded them from doing so. But as we start to return to normal, delinquencies and credit expansion is up. Whether or not the rise in credit, the rise in debt, will become a big problem for Canadians is largely dependent on how our economy fares in the post-COVID Don't say it. Post -COVID world, hopefully. As mentioned, higher debt levels aren't necessarily a problem so long as we have the income to back it up. However, the Canadian economy is definitely facing some challenges going forward. As Canadians spend more at the pumps, more on servicing their debt due to rising interest rates, and we start to see inflation, our inflation rate go higher and higher, there are definitely some big challenges ahead. As Canadians spend more and more on gas, more and more on servicing their debt, more on their mortgages, and less of their purchase and more of their purchasing power getting eaten up by inflation, that's less money going out into the world, into the into the Canadian economy to help us grow. Well, we did receive news last week that our unemployment numbers are down to below pre-pandemic levels. We are off to a decent start, but whether or not Canadians can continue to recover from from COVID, from the COVID economy, is going to be largely dependent on if the Bank of Canada can get its arms around inflation and get it back to that two to three percent target rate. And obviously, it's also dependent on how the Ukrainian crisis pans out. There are many that are saying that the crisis could spark a global recession, and if that happens, then the Bank of Canada is largely at a at a crossroads. They're largely at a rock in a hard place. Father, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. 
If we do enter into an oil-induced recession, where the price of oil causes the unemployment rate to go up while simultaneously causing our inflation rate to go up, then we're in a period of stagflation and the Bank of Canada will really be, be between a rock and a hard place. If they raise rates to get a, to get a hold on inflation, that's going to cause our employment rate to go up even higher. If they lower rates to help with the unemployment rate, then that's going to cause our inflation rate to go even higher at a time when, because of oil shocks, the, uh, the inflation rate will already be sky high. So, everything is really going to be largely dependent, I think, on how this Ukrainian crisis plays out. There's obviously hundreds of different opinions on how on what the end game is with the Russian invasion, as it doesn't look like it's going very well for Russia. Looks thus far like it's going fairly well for Ukraine, but time will tell. And nobody really knows what the post-invasion world looks like. That's obviously a discussion for another time, and we'll obviously have updates out on this crisis and how it affects the, the economies here in the West, on the United States, and in Canada. Um, and uh, click like and subscribe to get those updates, but thanks so much for watching.